So morning everybody and welcome, uh, welcome um, to church on Trinity Sunday and I can't say how delighted I am to see Judith back with us this morning because we haven't seen you for ages, it's lovely to see you and Hazel and so many others that we haven't seen, seen some, each other for quite some time and um, so it's really special to be worshipping together this morning and good morning to all of you uh, watching at home on Facebook as well. Um, it's Trinity Sunday, which is a day where if you have a curate, you get the curate to do the sermon. Um, but I haven't got him yet, so next year the curate will be doing the sermon on Trinity Sunday. Um, but talking of curates, um, Mike, Mike Fitzsimmons is going to come to be our curate here. He will be um, ordained deacon on the 26th of June. All priests are first ordained deacon. Um, and deacons wear their, their stole, which is the scarf that we wear, um, across their body. I always say it looks a bit like Miss World. <laughs> um, they wear it across their body, and the stole actually represents the um, towel that Jesus wrapped around his waist to wash the disciples' feet. And the word deacon actually means servant. Um, and so all priests are ordained deacon first, and you serve as a deacon for a whole year before you're ordained a priest. So a deacon, um, a deacon's job is to preach, is to find out what the needs of the community are and help to lead intercessions. They lead people to confession um, and they read the gospel. So there's a particular role that a deacon plays in the church services. And then once he's ordained priest, he will be able to preside at the Eucharist. But up until that point, he will assist me um, at the Eucharist. So I thought I'd explain that because I know we haven't had a curate here before, so sometimes if you're in a parish where you've always had them, you, you know how it works, but obviously it's quite new for us uh, to, have, to have a deacon uh, for a year and then a priest. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to Mike's coming, um, and I think it will give us something to look forward to really for the summer, which is wonderful. And he will move to Clown on Friday the 4th of June, so this coming Friday. Um, so I'm putting a hamper together. Thank you to those of you that have given me some bits and bobs. If you have got anything that you'd like to um, put, I have got I have got quite a lot. So I'm not. This isn't a plea for extra things. But if you have got something that you think, oh, actually, I'd quite like to put that in in the welcome hamper. Um, I'm going to put that in his house on Friday, so that when he arrives uh, with his dog Lucy, there'll be a nice welcome kit. We've got we've got tea bags and all those things that you want when you've just moved into a house, so you don't have to try and find find stuff um, in your packing. Um, so I hope we can give him a really warm welcome when he gets here because of course he's a, he's a single fella moving to a completely new place but I said I'm sure you'll make friends very quickly especially having the dog as well that will help him to, to settle in. So do pray for Mike as he's sort of settled into his house here and gets used to where things are and, and that, all that sort of thing and you will all meet him on our patronal festival which will be the 27th of June at the moment, I'm not sure when we will be allowed to sing. I, would, I really hope we will, um, but things are looking a little bit touch and go with the 21st of June relaxation of restrictions uh, following the news, but um, it's looking a little bit unsure. So, but I, mean, I hope we might be able to sing. If not, we'll still have a really fantastic celebration. Oh, and Sam's here as well. Lovely to see you, Sam. Uh, another person we haven't seen for a little while. So, welcome, Sam. Um, so yes, yeah, so I do be playing praying for the curate. Today, we're making history today in Clown Church. Um, we've got a couple getting married this afternoon. I don't normally do weddings on a Sunday, um, but um, this couple have already had to make changes because of the pandemic. And it also, it turns out that um, the bride is an A&E a a matron and the groom is an ambulance driver. So I thought, yeah, you can get married on a Sunday, I think, <laughs> I think we'll allow it. Um, but the, the reason they're making history is that they will be the first couple in, in Clown Church to get married under the new marriage registration rules, which basically means that their mother's names will go on the register alongside their father's names, which is a really positive change. Um, and what will happen is, instead of signing the register in church, they sign a document that then I send to the registry office and the registry office registered marriage, and they issue the certificate. So the system has changed a little bit, but it won't. It won't affect. It's only affect. It's affected me positively because it means I'm not responsible anymore for registering marriages. Um, all I'm responsible for is getting that document to the registry office. Um, but it's, it's an exciting change, actually. Um, it's a good change, and so they'll be the first to marry under that under that new rule. So do pray for Kay and Richard 
uh, today as, as they get married here this afternoon. So you'll, you'll hear the bells, well, the recording of the bells going <laughs> this afternoon. Um, so we look forward to that. And just to let you know that our, it feels like we've just had one because we have just had one. Our annual church meeting was back in October um, because of the pandemic and everything. But we have got another annual church meeting as if we knocked it back, we would be completely out of sync, if you know what I mean. Um, so our annual church meeting at which we will elect our church wardens and um, PCC members and just report on what's happened in the last year. Um, it will be after the service on the 13th of June. So it's actually after the service, after the next time we gather. Um, so if you can be ready for that, to just stay for 20 minutes or so after the morning service for our annual meeting. And there will be a report booklet that you can take home and read. Um, I don't like to sort of bore everybody by reading through all the reports in the actual meeting itself. Uh, we just get through the business quite quickly. But it's one of those legal things that we need to do to keep keep the church ticking over. Uh, so do stay after the service on the 13th of June. If you are not on the electoral roll, I think most of you are, but if you're not on the electoral roll, which basically gives you the opportunity to vote at that meeting and, and say that you're an official member of our church, and it is possible to be a mem um, on the electoral roll of more than one church, so if you'd like to be on the roll for both Barbara and Clown, that's fine. Um, there, is, there are some forms at the back of church that you can sign, and that just helps us to keep a track of of who are part of our, our church family. I think that's all of our notices. So if you would like to stand and we'll begin our service. There are three that testify in heaven, the Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. So we come into God's presence and we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we just take a moment's silence to consider our faults and failings. How often have I longed to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, says the Lord, but you would not come to me. Let us as wayward children return to God and confess our sins. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we say together the song of the angels. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth, and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your 
your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of ghosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook as the voices of those were called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 8 verses 12 to 17. So then brothers and sisters we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if you live by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. 
The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Did you know that loneliness is considered to be one of the biggest problems that we face in our society today. It's considered particularly to be a health problem. According to some research, loneliness is as bad for you as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And being lonely increases your risk of early death by 29%. We know this instinctively, really. Remember that one of the worst punishments that can be meted out is putting someone in solitary confinement. Since the lockdown, many of us have felt this loneliness acutely. We were not made to be alone. The writers of the creation accounts in the book of Genesis instinctively knew this as well. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then in Genesis chapter 2, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. What we often don't think about is that God is never alone. God is Trinity. Remember the phrase in the creation account in the book of Genesis, let us make humankind in our image. This is not a single lonely entity speaking. It is something else, something not quite yet defined, but clearly more than one. God is an us, a we. So from the very beginning of time, God is not a singular individual, but a relational being, a trinity. And we humans are made in the image of this God, the trinity. We're not made in the image of Jesus. We're not made in the image of God the Father. We're not made in the image of God the Holy Spirit. We are made in the image of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are made in the image of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, all three. And so at the very heart of being human is the need for community, the need to be in relationship, the need to be dependent, the need to be giving and receiving as that is at the very heart of the God in whose image we are made. If God is Trinity, then equality is at the heart of what it means to be human. At the cause of a lot of the pain and destruction in the world is inequality. The researchers Kate Pickett and Richard Wilkinson identified in their book The Spirit Level that the more equal a society is, the better off everyone is. The bigger the gap between rich and poor, the worse off everyone is. We have seen this inequality laid bare in the disproportionate number of people from poorer backgrounds who have died of COVID-19 and in the terrible violence perpetrated against innocent black people around the world, most recently in the case of George Floyd in the United States. The root cause of pain and suffering in our world is inequality. This is because we are made in the image of God, the Trinity. The three persons of the Trinity are equal, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
They are not in a hierarchy. They are co-equal, constantly giving and receiving from one another. If we believe that within God's very self is built equality, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for what the best for our world should be? Equality is built into the very nature of God. That means that inequality is an affront to God's very nature, which is why I think Christians should work hard to include everyone. Jesus demonstrated this through his interactions with people from all parts of society. Jesus spent his time destroying the barriers of inequality between clean and unclean, male and female, and even Jew and Gentile. Equality is at the heart of the Trinity and should be at the heart of our community here. If God is Trinity, then mutual self-giving is at the heart of what it means to be human. The three persons of the Trinity are constantly giving and receiving from one another. It is a reciprocal friendship at the heart of God's self. If we worshipped God as a single entity, a big boss man, we would begin to prize independence and dominance as the important virtues. But the God we worship is Trinity, an eternal self-giving friendship, not a scary big boss man in the sky. As Jesus was born into this world a tiny, scrawny baby, God came to us in total vulnerability, ready to be changed and dependent on others. So if mutual self-giving is at the heart of the Trinity, then it should be at the heart of our community here. If God is Trinity, then constant movement and dynamic creation is at the heart of what it means to be human. The relationship between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is often described with a Greek word meaning dance. It is a fluid exchange between the three persons, moving, giving, receiving. It is the eternal dance of love at the centre of God's being. Constant movement, constant creation. God is not static. God did not create the world like some divine watchmaker and set it running and then sit back. God is constantly renewing and creating and making all things new. God is constantly at work in our world through the dynamic movement of the three persons of the Trinity at work in us. This means that movement and change and creativity should be at the heart of our community here. This is the God we worship, God the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. When we are not reflecting God's image as Trinity, we find the disease of loneliness blighting our communities and society. When we are not reflecting God's image as Trinity, we find the effects of inequality on all people, rich and poor, a world where white lives matter more than black lives. When we are not reflecting God's image as Trinity, we find ourselves stuck in a rut, not growing, not developing. Our growth is stunted and we are left at the side of the room, not joining in with the great dance. God, the Trinity, is the God we pray to, the God into whose life you were baptised. It is a dynamic life of equality, mutuality, self-giving, caught up in a divine dance that makes life worth living. So may you know the life-giving power of the Trinity, and may it fill us that our community may flourish, that we may truly live up to the image of God in which we were created. Praise be to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
please stand as you are able. And of course, our, our creeds, our statements of faith were written at a time where people were trying to understand uh, the doctrine of the Trinity and trying to put words to it. And so the Nicene Creed is one way of describing the nature of the God that we worship. And you'll see as, we, as it moves forwards, it begins by talking about God the Father, then it talks about God the Son or the Word, which is Jesus and what happened to him and what he did, and then what proceeds from the Father and the Son, which is the Holy Spirit, coming to the end and how the Holy Spirit is the one that works through us in our world. So we declare that faith in the Trinity together now. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the, for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray. And just before um, Roger leads us in prayer, uh, some sad news particularly for the community in Balboa, but some of you may have known him. Uh, but sadly, Neville Elcock died on Friday uh, in the care home that he was living in. So, so do please be thinking about his wife Anne and family um, as they mourn his loss. We, we will miss Neville so much. Um, I love the fact that Neville absolutely loved music. And certainly at uh, Balboa, whenever the choir would sing a stunning anthem during communion, he would give them a round of applause even though we weren't really supposed to. And I never really minded it because it's, it, was, it was Neville's enthusiasm for, for music that was just so lovely. So yes, we'll, we'll miss him terribly, Neville, but his name will be read out in the prayers. But I wanted to just make that announcement, particularly for those of you from Bible Church, maybe watching online that perhaps haven't heard the news. Thank you. Let us pray. Jesus has the words of eternal life. He sheds light on a right attitude to the Lord. Through Jesus, we are shown God's compassion and mercy. Let us pray for that love in our lives, in the church and in the world. Let compassion and mercy be the hallmarks of our church life and all its activities. Let us be not noticeable by compassion and mercy shining in our behaviour and in our conversations and disrupt any rules which block them out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let compassion and mercy take root in every institution, policy, and structure. Let them challenge accepted wrongs and disturb complacency. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let compassion and mercy guard every doorway and fill every room. Let them colour each encounter and drive every decision. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. let compassion and mercy transform our attitudes to all those who are ill or frail, particularly Wyatt and Gareth Ruthland, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret and Jim Gilmore, Luke Firth, Chloe Parks, 
Patty Wood, Jean Naylor, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Richard Addis, Margaret Malpass, Mark Bolton, and Susan Foppy. And those who are marginalised, ignored, or despised. Let there be healing of all damaged self perception and restoration of impaired human dignity. Lord, in your mercy, let compassion and mercy accompany the dying and welcome them into eternity. And particularly Hazel Harrington, Carol Sims, Kathleen Wheeler, Patrick Elmore, Stuart Buckingham, Patricia Smalley, Joan Buxton, and Neville Elcock. Lord, in your mercy, Passion and mercy blossom in all of us as we live out our thankfulness to the God of love for all of his goodness to us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand and sing the stand as you are able for the peace. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. And so we offer one another a sign of peace as safely as we can. Peace be with you all. Of the altar will be one of the roles of the deacon when he comes and the exhorted servant is that would prepare the table for the meal. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your Holy Church, acclaim you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, 
be seen forever of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that broken bread and wine outpour may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he prayed to you. He broke the bread, shared it with them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he gave me thanks, shared it, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, as we remember all that Jesus did, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, you help us to work together for that day when your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth, and your kingdom comes. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of our Lord, St. John the Baptist, St. James, and all the saints, to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit on the earth as we come to pray. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Do come forward to receive communion. If you would prefer a blessing, please bring the order of service with you.
in his breath. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living and reigning in the perfect unity of God. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and therefore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are yet the three persons of yet one God. Please would you stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And let's declare these words together, taken from the book of Revelation. Please join in with the words in bold. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed us to God. From every tribe and language and nation, you have made us to be a kingdom and priests serving our God. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.